Hi, welcome to cloud computing course. In today's session, we will be discussing about one of the very important AWS offering or AWS service called S3. So, S3 basically belongs to the service called storage. and it is used for simple storage service. So, the name is simple storage service and that is what becomes SSS and then they call it S3. So, that is the whole concept here and today we are going to discuss about this service here. It comes under the category called storage and it is also called IAS infrastructure as a service kind of a service. The type of the service S3 is infrastructure as a service. The category or group in which it is put is storage. There is another storage service which is provided by Amazon and that is called EBS which we will learn little later. Now, what is S3? To put it very simply, you can imagine S3 as a large collection of buckets in which you are putting some object inside it. So, let us assume that this is our cloud, this is my cloud and in the cloud there are a lot of buckets somebody has put it there which I can use it to store some of my objects. So, I can put some object into this bucket. I can create another bucket and put it inside some object here, some object into this bucket. So, these are the buckets in which you are putting the objects. So, this is basically what Amazon provides you and the number of such buckets you can put it and number of objects you can put it is completely unlimited and uh, all of these objects which you are stored in the these buckets can be accessed from EC2 server or or any EC2 instance server over HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So, that is what is the concept of S3 simple storage service okay? and that is what we are going to discuss about in this one. So, this is just bucket in which you store objects. These objects are nothing but the files. So, let us see the details one by one. First thing is that you can write as a regular object, read and delete the objects containing from one byte. See the size of the each object can be one byte or it can be five terabytes. So, depending on how what what is the purpose of the object or what is the size, it can be one byte to five ter five terabyte of each object. You can also think about these objects are nothing but just like a file, some file. Okay, These are nothing but some file objects, some files. The number of objects you can store is unlimited. So, this is another good feature about it. There is no limit on how much objects you can store it. Next is each object is stored in a bucket as I have explained before and retrieved via a unique developer assigned key. What is this unique developer assigned key? What is it? This is nothing but the file name in our real sense. So, this is nothing but a file name what in our life happens. So, this is like a file name. Okay file name. So, each object is stored in and each bucket is like a folder. So, that is pretty much what is the concept for S3. 
Now, next what we will see that is each object is stored in region and never leaves the region. This is very important from compliance perspective because what you want is that let us assume that I upload lot of important files and everything in a particular region and if the cloud computing service providers copies that file to another region for replication, disaster or any other purpose, it might be against the compliance of my organization or my country in which I am. But Amazon makes sure that wherever you upload the data in that region, it remains in that region. It never leaves the region, so which is very good. S3 also provides you an option to secure the data, secure data upload, download and also encryption of the data as well. So, you can encrypt the data yourself and upload or you can ask AWS to encrypt your data before putting it in its any of the buckets. So, that is also possible either you encrypt yourself or you let Amazon encrypt your data before putting it into any of the AWS S3 buckets. So, it is all up to you. Next thing is that about S3, it uses a standard based REST and SOAP interfaces designed to work with any internet development toolkit. What it means is that that REST and SOAP interfaces can be used with any internet development toolkits and you can develop your application in any language like C, C sharp. Java, .NET or any other language and you can communicate with any of these buckets to pull the data, to put the data inside these buckets. So, it becomes very easy, easy to use the S3 from any of the application which you are developing and why because it is uses a very standard interface called REST and SOAP which works over HTTP and HTTPS. Best thing about this is, it provides a very, very high level of reliability and durability. So, let us see this, this one, it provides 99.9 .9 so much durability and this much availability, which is a very, very high level of durability and availability. Means this much is that object will never get misplaced or lost and S3 as a service is will be available for 99.99% .99 of the time, which is a very high level of ability. So, S3 is basically used for very large amount of data storage which you want and provides various features. Let us understand one, let us review this thing. In S3 you can write. You can write and read the object, you can delete objects, each object can be of a size of 1 byte or 5 terabytes. Number of objects you can store is unlimited, there is no limit. Each object is stored in a bucket, it is given a unique developer assigned key which is like a file, bucket is like a folder. Objects stored in a region never leave the region, which is very good from compliance perspective. You can encrypt the data or, or let Amazon encrypt the data for you, both the facili uh, facility is there in AWS S3. Best part of this is that S3 uses a standard based REST and SOAP interfaces, which is which makes it, which makes it very easy to upload the data, download the data, delete the data, modify the data from any of the regular applications which you develop in any of these languages like C, Python, Java, whatever language you are using because it is using a very standard REST and SOAP interface. And the last which is very important and very great about, very good thing about S3 service is that it has an extremely high level of durability and at the same time it has a 99.99% .99 of 
availability of objects. Now, let us see about what are the various prices if you want to use S3, it is not a free service obviously. So, you are going to pay some price for it. So, let us discuss little bit about the pricing structure. Now, the basic about the pricing structure, let us first understand basics about the pricing structure and then we will discuss about low level granular factors based on which these prices are calculated. So, let us start with basics. So, first basics is that pay only for what you use. So, it is not like that if you are going to use 100 GB uh, space then 100 GB space if you want it just for 5 days and after that you want to use only for 10 GB you will not be charged for 100 GB because just because you started with 100 GB. Once you deleted all the files of 80 GB only 20 GB is left you will be charged only for 20 GB. So, that is what it means pay only for what you use not what you started with. There is no minimum fee, there is nothing like that you must pay this much minimum amount irrespective of how much you store. So, it is if you are just going to store 1 GB then you just pay for 1 GB. You can also calculate your monthly bill using the AWS simple monthly calculator so that you can find out how much you are going to spend. Now, this pricing varies on few factors. First is the amount of storage which is obvious. So, how much data you are storing in S3 in various buckets. Now, the another parameter which impacts the pricing is that how many HTTP requests or HTTPS requests you are making through REST and SOAP interfaces to your S3 buckets from outside. The next parameter which impacts the pricing of S3 is that how much actually data you are transferring from S3 buckets in or out. So, there are three parameters which is very important to understand here that first is that size of the object itself, then how many HTTP HTTP requests you are making and the third is that how much actual data is getting transferred from S3 in or out. So, these are the three parameters depending on them your pricing for S3 will be calculated. Now, first let us discuss about storage pricing. If you remember in the last one we have discussed that we need storage request and transfer pricing. So, let us discuss about storage pricing first terabyte depending on region it is 1.125 dollar per GB, 0 0.110 per GB and all that. About the request pricing how many requests you are making? So, it goes like this for you have to be just careful that for all the requests you are making put copy post or list all of these these are going over HTTP request, these are all HTTP request. Okay. So, these HTTP request which you are making to get the data, put the data, modify the data, get a list of the data all of these also cost money. So, it says that 1 cents for 1000 requests. So, every 1000 requests you have to pay 1 cents for making the request. There is important thing there is no charge for delete request. If you have a get and all other requests, it will still cost you 1 cents per 10,000 requests. But if it is just you are saying get and all other, it is 1 cent per 10,000 requests. But if it is put, copy, post, or list request, it is causing 1,000 requests, 1 cents for 1,000 requests. Now, let us consider about transfer part. So, when you transfer the data to one of these S3 buckets, you have to pay for that. Imp good part is that all the data transfer which are in are free. Okay. So, this is free 
for if the data transfer is in means you are uploading data from outside to inside the only time you will be paying for a transfer fee if the data is going out so when the data is going out data transfer out then there is a cost involved for first 1 GB per month it is free so this is free but after that it goes start increasing okay or decreasing basically the larger the volume you have the less you have to pay so first 1 GB per month you will get a free data transfer out up to 10 terabytes per month after that after first GB of per month till 10 terabyte it is still 12 cents per GB so it is not very expensive and you can do that if you are planning to have a large amount of petabytes of data or something like that you can contact Amazon directly and find out the customizable code for you. What are the business use cases or benefits for using S3 service from Amazon or AWS? So first is that content storage and distribution. If you are in a business of content storage and distribution and these contents are very large in quantity and these contents can will be distributed across the globe for that kind of a business use cases you might want to use S3 for quick website if you just want a quick website of one page S3 works very well because you have to just put the HTML page and that's it if you want to store the data for data analysis for a temporary purpose it is perfectly fine we'll see and the last one is backup archiving and disaster recovery so that kind of a purpose still you can do it now let us see what is in the content storage and distribution it is highly durable and available store for a variety of content ranging from web applications to media files so let us assume that you have thousands and thousands of video file or thousands of or millions of audio file all of that if you want to store and manage yourself it is very expensive compared to that you can all store it into Amazon S3 and just access it over the HTTP request through your website so it makes it much easier to reach those contents at a very economical and scalable way easy to create a simple static website without installing and configuring any server so this is very good part because you don't have to download any web server or configure web server just put some static website 10 html pages starting with index and you are ready for your server lot of pharmaceutical data for analysis purpose we have seen that can use this kind of a or financial data for computation and pricing photo images for resizing that kind of a data huge amount of data for analysis purpose can use this s3 to store the data itself so basically ec2 was a computing resource and s3 is a storage resource backup archiving and disaster recovery S3 has been considered a highly durable, scalable and secure solution for backing and archiving your critical data. So once in a while or on a regular basis what you could do is that you can archive and take a back either you can take a backup or you can archive all your data into a S3 bucket maybe you can have two buckets one is for backing up and other is for archiving purpose and you can store all of this data into a bucket in S3. You can also use Amazon's S3 version, versioning capability to provide even further protection for your stored data. So you can say that this data object I am uploading with version 1.2 and next object I am uploading with version 1.3, 1.4. So tomorrow if the data is lost 1.4 or something, you can go back to the previous version and retrieve the data from there as well. So these are the some of the benefits of using uh, S3 in this one. First is that 
highly durable and available easy to create simple static websites static is the most important thing here because if it is a dynamic website then it will not work storage for data analysis like pharmaceutical data financial data photo images all that kind of a thing let us assume you have 1 million images the best place to store it in an economical and fastly accessible way is S3 itself. You can use S3 buckets for taking a backup, taking a archiving and disaster recovery because it is highly durable and scalable. It can be used for backing up and archiving. You can also use Amazon's versioning capability to provide even further protection for your stored data. And that pretty much completes our storage S3. Now what we are going to do is that we will see that how to create a S3 bucket and use the S3 service using Amazon Cloud. So once you come here, let us see that we have come to the our console and I will go to the services and I will select S3. Where is S3? Either you can go from here, console home, and select here S3 like this. So now to get it started using Amazon S3, it says that create a bucket to hold your objects. So first we will do is that we will create a bucket. So let us call it test bucket where we will put all the object and we will take some region, any region, take US standard, not a problem. Do you want to set up a logging? What it means is that you can create one bucket in which your actual data will be stored and access to all the transaction or request to that particular bucket for the data log for those access I can store it into another bucket. So if you want to do that you can say set up logging and do it if not then you can just say create. So this is where you have to be careful the bucket name space is shared by all users of the system. So find out some interesting name to give the bucket. I will just give some number test bucket 986 and I will say create. So now new bucket has been created for us. It says that the bucket this one is empty. So this is your test bucket, this is a bucket you have created. Okay? So there is nothing in this bucket, so it will not say. Now if you want to create a folder, let us assume I will create a folder, my folder. Okay? I can create another folder. So you see it works like a another bucket which is a collection of some objects. So it, I can have a objects, I can have a inside a bucket, I can have multiple folders, inside folders I can have another folder like here, right? create another folder. So it pretty much works like that. So it is a collection of or it is, it is like a one bucket is like a one logical drive for you. If you want to treat it is like that, you can call it that as well. You can have another bucket, I can create another bucket something like this, test bucket 2 and then again like this. Okay? So I have created another bucket, test bucket 2, test bucket this one. Inside this I have two folders. So I can create here as well or something here 
and can cre keep creating the folder and all. Now, how do I put the objects into this first time? What I can do is that I can say upload and click add files and from your local system it will add the file. If you want to remove the selected files, you can remove it as well. If you want to attach the multiple files, you can use the enable enhanced uploader. Okay? So this is the way you can upload the file to S3 from your local system. I am not just uploading it, but that is the way to upload it. Now this is the transfers, create folder, action. If you want to uh, delete a particular folder, let us assume I want to delete the my folder. Okay? Then what you can come here and say that delete, it will permanently delete my folder. Okay? So that folder is gone. Now if you want to delete a particular bucket, you can come here and you can say delete. So it will delete the bucket test too. Okay? So that is the way you do it. You upload the data into a bucket, you create a bucket and all of those things. So that's pretty much explained how S3 works for us. So let us go to the services, see the S3 and we'll go to the S3 home. Okay. So let us get back to uh, our S3 and uh, we have, in fact, we have pretty much covered the S3, how you create a bucket, how you upload the file and all. And later part, we might sometimes see that how to access them.